his years in the field, Cry consult has been around the block a few times. He has had the opportunity to work in a number of different settings with different clientele. And the question about him that's on all of our minds, as we shall find, is in his mind as well. Is what is Crowd going to be when he grows up? <laughs> to be here today and thank you for coming here to hear our presentations. Um, I rehearsed it yesterday and then I completely changed it last night. <laughs> by reading a poem, I still want to cover everything I said last night, but I promise I won't speak too fast. I'm going to start, lead off with some simple questions. What is the meaning of life? Why am I here? What is my purpose? Well, I admit that the questions are probably simpler than the answers. In fact, I've been pondering it my whole life, and I'm sure many of you have pondered the same type of theme. So, maybe we get the best glimpses if we're stumbling down through a whiteout. The wind is blowing snow in our face, our feet are cold and our hands are tingling. We don't know how much further it is to the tent, and if we get find where the tent was, whether it'll still be standing, or we're at the lead end of the rope. Our knees are starting to shake, and our palms are sweaty. We look down and think, wow, I'm a long ways above my last piece of protection. I can risk getting a ground fall. So those times you look inside, you summon up every last vestige of, vestige of strength that you have, and you focus. Those are the times that we're on that proverbial edge. There is no complacency. You're in the here and the now, and everything is about survival. You're striving to survive. But in so doing, you're also thriving. Life is really at its sweetest. Well, in my professional life, I've tried to stay on that same edge. If I feel I'm getting too complacent, if the job is too predictable, I know what I can do, and more importantly, what I can't do, then I'm motivated to think about quitting and moving on. My father always told his students, if you're going to have an impact, you have to be willing to commit yourself and take some chances. So I've taken a big chance, and I've quit my job, too. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. <laughs> so for the last um, 11 years, I've been teaching at the a juvenile detention center. Um, it's a job that I was really stimulated to begin with. I thought, wow, I can help create a safe environment for these people. I can help them grapple with the kinds of issues and questions that they're facing in life. But over time, I began to realize that there was a whole lot of constraints that were being placed upon me by the very system, the institution, the facility in which I was working. It all came to a head as I was walking up the ramp last January and I punched the button to let the guard in the control cage know that somebody wants in the facility. They look in their video monitor, monitor and say, oh, it's the teacher, and they push another button to open the outside gate. And then there's two more locked doors. And I thought, wow, this is a routine I've been doing for almost 11 years. Huh, I could keep doing it for another six or seven and then I could comfortably retire. I could just kick back. And I had to think, I have friends who are hospice workers. They say the last thing their clients invariably say is, I wish I had followed my heart and not my sense of obligation. So my heart was not in marching in place until I could comfortably retire. So I took the risk and I quit the job and I've thrown all my cards on the floor. <laughs> So, um, risk. What is risk? Well, all of us as wilderness instructors know that risk is the possibility of bodily harm or injury. We have to minimize risk, don't we? But risk on the flip side of the coin is an opportunity. It is opening a door to a whole new way of seeing things and a whole new way of being. That is a risk that we must seize. Now our institutions, our schools, and our courts like to label kids as at risk. They're at risk 
of chemical dependency. They're at risk of failure, at risk of dropping out, at risk of juvenile delinquency. So what do we do? We keep them safe by locking them up. We turn them into juvenile delinquents. Something that I've learned is that we have to we have to completely redefine the way that we are teaching. John Dewey, the great educator, said that education is not preparation for life. Education yeah. is life itself. Yeah. Yeah. So we have to build upon John Dewey's foundation and make sure that our young people have the opportunity to both experience and learn every day throughout their lives because that is life. We are always learning. Um, so I have quit my job. It was a comfortable, well-paying job, yes. Um, now I am unemployed and I'm trying to decide what I'm going to do when I grow up. <laughs> well, I really appreciate this kind of community because there's lots of inspiring thoughts and lots of, of people who think similarly. So I can draw upon all of you. I can lean upon you and help me guide, guide my way. The other thing that I am um, going to keep in mind is a T.S. Eliot quote. Only those who risk going too far can find out how far one can really go. So I am at the base of the climb. I am getting roped up and I'm putting on my reading glasses. So, I'm going to close with reading a poem that I wrote for a Northwest AEE conference for the William Soul Experiential Educator of the Year Award that year. We have all known that spot where the walls tower round. Our hopes have been dashed, we seem pressed to the ground. At a time such as this, to continue our work, we must deep, reach deep inside and climb on. At the start of our quest, the outcome is in doubt. But that's never a reason to fail to start out. Our challenge is, whatever they be, demand we begin and climb on. We must cast aside all our questions of weather and simply accept we must do it together. The path before us is long and goes up. Now is the time to climb on. Just like on the rock when we climb with a friend, there will be there will have to be somebody on the sharp end. But the leader is heartened when tied to the rope, hearing the signal, climb on. There will be times while on lead that our progress will stall. Doubts will occur, what's the point of it all? But voices within, many friends, some long gone, keep gently urging, climb on. Other times we will find, when we've given our best, that now is the time for some long needed rest, Put on a belay and pull in the rope. Shout down the signal, climb on. The best way to succeed in our quest is with sharing of what we do to proceed full of caring toward one another, all of nature around. Our task, simply put, is climb on. Take turns with the others to lead out the rope. Balance lets all of us test out our hope. But we each have a part in the plan that unfolds. We must do it together, climb on. We'll, we've set our goals lofty, so risks we must take. As onward we climb, choosing not to forsake. All the things we hold dear, all the visions and truths, these provide need to climb on. At times when we're feeling that we've reached the top, just keep in mind that it's best not to stop. To harvest our dreams, we must keep keeping on. Our song deep inside is climb on. Weak and strong, poor and rich, it will take every kind. A rainbow of color, a tapestry to bind, is woven together, dreams, hopes, and desires, taking us higher, climb on. Feeding the fire, climb on. Helping each other, climb on. Taking the risk, climb on. Accepting assistance, Climb on. Go forth in your life. Climb on. Climb on. Climb on. Climb on. Climb on.